Manchester United, they didn't let up. Champion teams don't make that mistake. Benfica were lucky here. As the Portuguese eleven couldn't score themselves, Shea Brennan put one through his own goal. After an unsuccessful Benfica shot, Bobby Charlton was prominent again. A pass found Crerand. United's fourth goal. It was only right that Bobby Charlton should get one himself. Goal number five. Busby described the 5-1 defeat of Benfica as the team's finest hour, and the rest of Europe took note. We just completely annihilated Benfica that night. Everything went off. Every shot that was probably meant for a goal went in. The tackle, we won the tackle. The bounce ball, we won it. Everything went for That was probably the best football that we ever played in my time with Manchester United was the game in Benfica. When that was, was near enough perfection. In the semi-finals, United were drawn to play Partizan Belgrade. This is hard, hard football indeed. It's a goal! Oh, beautiful goal! A 2 0 defeat was not promising. In the home leg, United met with strong resistance from the Yugoslavian defence in a bad tempered match. Charlton, Charlton. Law oh, not quite able to get there. Heard beaten in the tackle twice. Great fullback play that. Oh! Oh, Yasufi, a savage tackle on him. A savage tackle on Anderson. Oh, my goodness me, what a thing for an international player to do to a boy making his debut in European football. And he too is being booked. Both Yugoslavian fullbacks have now been booked. And Styles surely once again impeded. Well, this is getting into an absolute crazy situation. Foul after foul after foul. I can't ever remember seeing a game in quite such a situation as this. The referee not knowing which way to turn, which player to look at. Now warning Styles, he'll send him off. Now arguing with Prund and Miladinovic. And he has sent off. He has sent off Miladinovic and Krerand. Miladinovic, the inside left of Partizan, has been sent off, and so has Pat Krerand of Manchester United. What a sensation this is in a European Champions game. Styles. It's in! He's scored! Styles has scored up the goalkeeper. 17 minutes left. And Manchester United have scored 1 0 in this game. The banners wave, the crowd rises to its feet. And I'm losing my voice, I'm sorry to say, but what a goal! Styles, Styles, the hero of United tonight, in defence and in attack. Anderson. Again, Soskic just gets his hand to it. Tamea, the left winger, bringing it away. Styles, just listen to that crowd. Anderson, can United get one more and at least earn a replay? The chance at last has come. Charlton header, Soskit save. Charlton, can we get one last desperate fling, Styles? And there it is, Manchester United, for the third time, have reached the semi-final. And there you see, in their disconsolate players walking off, just how they must feel. The favourites were out of the tournament. The European Cup was beyond Busby's reach once more. Time again.
to reflect upon United's obsessive quest. They had a team that was good enough to win it, and I think that he felt that. And of course, the, the accident brought all that to an end. Uh, but it was obvious that um, it was something that needed to be done, you know, um, for, the, for the respect to be shown properly to the ones that had died in, in, in the effort of trying to win it initially. May 1968. One match from realising a dream, United travelled to London for the final against Benfica. Benfica had won the European Cup twice and had also played in two previous finals. United had the psychological advantage of having beaten them in 1966. United also had the advantage of playing at Wembley. Brennan judging that one beautifully for best. A chance for Aston if he can get there because Henriquez was well off his line. And United really worrying Benfica now. Done for Sadler. Charlton! It's there! Bobby Charlton! Bobby Charlton makes it 1 0. Bobby Charlton. That's his 20th goal in the European Cup competition. This is going for Torres' his head again, Eusebio, and now Grasso! Oh, it's 1-1. One, one. Grasso, Jamie Grasso. Jamie Grasso makes it 1-1. One, one. So Manchester United have got to start all over again. Eusebio. And that's not a bad one either. Oh, how this man can hit a ball. George Best going through here. Yes, it must be for George Best. Georgie Best has done it. Two minutes of extra time gone, and Georgie Best makes it 2 1. Nobby Stars is making sure that he's keeping five defenders back here with him, four others alongside himself to make sure they don't give anything away, although he's letting Crown go up now. But he's making sure Charlie Tony Dunn doesn't disappear. And that was a tremendous save, Kidd! Kidd it is, number eight! Oh, what a great goal. Kidd entered the first one, and Berto pushed it out, Enriquez pushed it out, but then jo uh, young Kidd entered it back over him and underneath the crossbar in the back of the net. Brian, the crowd is erupting. Brian Kidd, 19 years old today. And what a birthday present. It looks as though he's earned for himself. Brennan now. Kid there with Charlton. And Kid again. Kid dragging Cruz over and beating him. This looks dangerous. Charlton! Oh. It's to be! Bobby Charlton! What a goal! And there he is, Bobby Charlton. What an incredible goal! 4-1 it is now! And surely Manchester United are going to win this European Champions Cup. But the tiredness now has only got to last for about another 10 seconds. Now Creron, referee Labello has taken a full-time signal from both his linesmen. And there it is, there's the final whistle! Manchester United have won the European Champions Cup. That trail which started back in September 1956 has finally been completed for Matt Busby. And there is Matt Busby, tears in his eyes. boys who done us proud last night.
The boys, you have one honour for the club, the one honour for Manchester, the one honour for England. And uh, I'm very proud to be the manager of these lads who have done such a wonderful job. And finally, up the Reds. Up the Reds! That night <coughs> at Wembley, it was a crowning glory for us all. For the players that had gone in the crash, for Bobby Charlton and Bill Fox, who were members of that team who fortunately survived, even the players, the directors, the head was the chairman and directors, and everybody concerned. It was a night of achievement. You this, gave them a lot of memories that This night. is what was the object of the exercise from the start. To mark the triumph, Busby's achievements were acknowledged on a broad scale. Ten years after being awarded the CBE, he was knighted. Among other honours came the freedom of Manchester. A year later, Sir Matt decided the time had come to take a step back. Sir Matt has informed the board that he wishes to relinquish the position of team manager at the end of the present season. The chairman and directors have tried to persuade him to carry on and it was only with great reluctance that his request has been accepted. The board fully appreciate the reasons for his decision and it was unanimously agreed that he be appointed general manager of the club which Sir Matt is very happy to accept. Wilf McGuinness, a Busby babe whose playing career was curtailed by injury, was promoted to chief coach and then became the manager of a team which had seen its best days. The new manager was judged swiftly and severely. Franco Farrell was next to try Busby's mantle, as Sir Matt settled into the role of club director. O'Farrell was dismissed after a season and a half. Since then, Tommy Doherty, Dave Sexton, Ron Atkinson, and now Alex Ferguson have tried to restore United to the preeminent position the club held under Sir Matt. The great man remained, now as United's president, a source of inspiration and advice. Well, he gives me every incentive and uh, all the ambitions that you could ever wish for in a manager. I mean, the great thing about a club is to, the, the tradition. And it's something you don't buy in a chemist. You know, that it's there. And you're proud to have it, and it's the target you have to achieve. And even if you get to sort of a, the, just the fringe of what uh, the Matt Busby record is like, then you'd be, I think all the supporters and myself and all the players would all be proud of ourselves and would really feel we've achieved something. The influence on others spread far beyond Old Trafford. Bill Shankly loved it. He loved him. A lot of the Liverpool players, when I used to speak to them, you know, they used to say, he idolises Matt Busby. You know, whatever Matt Busby says, it goes. I, I always remember... Uh, the two, the two teams were staying somewhere once, at the same time, in the same hotel. And, um, and Bill Shankly never drank. He never drank. But Sir Matt had a drink. And I think he just bumped into Sh to Shanks and he says, Come on, Bill, let me buy you sherry. And Bill Shankly couldn't say that he didn't drink. And he says, all right. And he, he, he took a sherry off, off Sir Matt. And the Liverpool players, I remember, were absolutely staggered. You know? He says, well, that's the ultimate. The ultimate compliment. Sir Matt Busby will be remembered as a visionary. He introduced a youth policy. He realised the potential of European competition. And the three great teams he created were founded on a belief in exciting, attacking football. His legacy is one of the greatest football clubs in the world. People who, who remember Matt Busby from the beginning will always remember that he... He, he gave them something, memories, occasions, events, players, um, that, that will give them pleasure thinking about for the rest of their lives. And, it, and it's something that he can feel very, so, very satisfied with, that he's, he's made so many people, players alike, who've come through his hands happy, and people that have watched, he's made them happy.